Hello. In this video, we'll write a program that first asks the user to enter a sentence, and then it counts the number of characters in the sentence. To count characters, we need to input them first. We usually use Scanf for input, but Scanf requires us to know the format of the input, and unfortunately, we don't know how many words are going to be in the sentence that the user will enter. Even worse, Scanf can't read in spaces, so we need an alternative. In the last video, you saw that to display a single character to the console, you use putchar. Well, what do you think the function to read a single character from the console is called? That's right, it's getchar. Getchar is a low-level function. It always returns an int, either a character value or a special character called eof for the end of file. Note that most operating systems only pass characters to your program after the user presses the enter key. So we'll have the user type enter when she's done. In Eclipse, I'm going to go ahead and create a new C project. We'll call it counting chars. Hello world, Anzi C. And click finish. We'll open that up. Clean it up a little bit here. OK, so let's start. So we want to have the user enter in a sentence here. So we should give them some kind of a prompt. So let's see. Please enter a sentence, just like that. And then we'll flush that out to the buffer, just like we usually do. OK, now here we're going to be getting in one character at a time. So a single scanf isn't going to work. Um, we mentioned using the using getchar. Um, getchar is typically going to be used within a loop. So we can have a loop that will continue as long as the character that's read in is not the new line character. All right, so what could we do? Say something like the following. Char, call it in, or in character, I guess. And a while loop. This is while the character that's read in is not equal to the new line character, which is backslash n. We need to read in a character initially here. So in char equals get char initially. Check to see whether they, just in case they entered in new line as the first character. We'll count them, which we'll come back to in a minute, and then we'll get in the character again. Okay. Now the counting, um, we can keep track of fairly straightforwardly. So we could declare a letter count there. We should initialize that to zero when we start. Don't forget to do that. And then we, every time in the loop, every time that they enter in a single character, we'll add one to our counter. Let's check to see um, how this works. I suppose we should probably print out some kind of an output here. So we can say something like, when we're done, you entered, and then an integer number of characters. And that will be our count. Run a C++ application, enter a sentence, S try something easy like hello world. Hello has five characters, world has five characters, and one space in between should be 11 characters. All right, so it looks pretty good. Let's try a few different things. So if it's all one sentence, just hello, it's five characters. And we can type in, you know, other characters like an exclamation point, and they get counted as well. So note here that the final new line that the user entered, um, it doesn't count. Okay? And we could see why that would be the case here. So if they started off by entering the new line character, then this while loop would be false, and count would never be incremented. It would stay zero. Let's just say that they typed in one character, right? so say the letter Q. Right? So we have get char. It's not a new line. It gets counted, which would be the Q. Then the next character is the new line. So we come back up to our loop here. It checks to see if it's in the line and jumps out. So the count's only been incremented once. So count is 1. 
So what if we wanted to ignore certain types of characters, like the space characters? In order to do that, we need to learn about the C-type library. The character type header, ctype.h, contains a number of convenience functions for working with characters. Here are two for converting individual characters to upper or to lower case. Others are predicate functions. A predicate function is one that returns a Boolean. They typically have names like is and then some property that could be true or not. As you might expect, is digit, for instance, returns true if the character passed to it is a digit, one that's in the range 0 to 9. Look over the others. Let's change our program so that we don't count white space characters, like spaces or tabs. Which function should we use? One way would be to count both those that are alphabetic or digit characters. But then we wouldn't count things like punctuation. So a more straightforward solution would be to simply count those that aren't spaces. Let's try that out. OK, so now we want to count our characters that aren't spaces. So the idea here is that we're going to need a condition. So if some condition is true, increment the count. All right, so he said if the character that's entered is not a space. So to call the isSpace function, isSpace takes the character called inchar. And we said if it's not a space, so I could say if not, and use my, my bang character there. So if it's not a space, then go ahead and make the count. Let's try this again. Save it. So if we try something like our hello world, all right, that only registers 10 characters this time, so 5 in hello and 5 in world. Single word sentences still work just fine. And we can see here that, that if we type in, you know, I can put in my name here, and if I hit a bunch of spaces and I can tab, you know, my last name here, so Matt and Bautel should add up to 11, which it does, and it ignores all of the white space characters. That's it for this program. Until next time, I'm Matt. See you later.